So with us today is Dr. Marion Walker, recently retired from Primary Children's Hospital and the University of Utah in Salt Lake City, and also the chair of the Hydrocephalus Association's Medical Advisory Board. And we have the beautiful Jennifer Bouchard Johnson, our education manager, to his right. And I am Amanda Garzon, the director of communications and marketing for the Hydrocephalus Association. And we're going to continue with our Ask the Expert blog series. And today, this is a good question coming at us from Natasha, who is an adult, diagnosed as an adult, um, with arrested hydrocephalus. So something occurred that had her uh, get a scan that um, indicated that she had hydrocephalus and she was told she had arrested hydrocephalus and she does not have a shunt. She has had ICP monitoring and she had, has had tests for nerve damage, but she is not shunted. And her curiosity is um, what's the long-term outcome from her for her? What should she expect? expect? So you, she has been told she has hydrocephalus, a lifelong condition, but they're not doing anything about it. Beforehand, Dr. Walker, can you define arrested hydrocephalus? Uh, yes, the, there are two terms that are used that are very similar, um, arrested hydrocephalus and compensated hydrocephalus. Mm. Arrested would imply that um, the ventricles are large, you, it looks like you have hydrocephalus on scan, but there's no progression of the hydrocephalus. It's not getting worse, it's not building up more pressure, it's arrested. Uh, compensated hydrocephalus is, it really implies the same thing. I think most neurosurgeons prefer the term compensated because we're always nervous that this might be progressive to a slow degree. But compensated implies that everything's stable. We're not showing signs of progression. But it's sort of a technical definition, but um, uh, I think most neurosurgeons prefer compensated as, as the, the term. Mm. Um, for whatever reason, uh, young adults, uh, middle-aged adults, even more elderly people can have imaging showing hydrocephalus, um, but they are asymptomatic. Mm -hmm. They're living their lives normally, and um, those are the ones we, we sort of put into the compensated hydrocephalus category. The concern is that there can be slow progression of some symptoms. So once this diagnosis is made, you can never ignore it again. Um, some of the subtle changes might be uh, changes in, in memory, uh, changes in um, uh, just general executive type functions. To being able to organize mm -hmm. and plan yourself or your day, you right. start to struggle with that piece of it. And, um, and, and, and changes in vision. You can lose vision very slowly. Mm -hmm. And you can lose it so slowly that you don't know it. And it's very important once this diagnosis is made to have a visual examination every year because the, you cannot recover that lost vision. Mm -hmm. So monitoring the vision, monitoring um, uh, function, uh, intellectual function would be the, the major things to watch out for. And it may indeed be true, you have arrested hydrocephalus and it never get worse. But there are a subset that do get worse, so it's important to monitor. So I guess the answer, um, Natasha, would really be uh, live your life, have fun, enjoy yourself, but be mm -hmm. uh, aware that if you start to notice some subtle changes in, in your memory, if things start to get a little bit harder, that used to be easy to do. You were multitasking and now that's a little more difficult for you. Maybe you're in a, a business um, job, a, a managerial job where you did like strategic planning and all of a sudden the, those steps aren't coming in as easily for you or project management. Those would be signs that you might want to seek some um, medical assistance or a consult at the very least. And then the vision issue. And it sounds like the vision issue is kind of nice because you... You go to an eye exam every year, typically anyway, so it's a nice kind of check-in 
uh, with a medical professional to see if you're seeing subtle changes that you might not pick up on. I think it is important that the medical professional professional knows what to look for because mm -hmm. it's that fading, that pale color of the uh, mm -hmm. optic disc. So it shouldn't just be um, a visual acuity test. It's, they need to, to look in your eyes and see uh, the optic disc. So important for Natasha to let her eye doctor know that she has been diagnosed with this. Right. And if they're not comfortable with that, maybe to even switch to a different doctor and a different ophthalmologist or optometrist who, who is comfortable with hydrocephalus. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Walker. I think that that actually is going to answer a lot of questions for a lot of people in mm -hmm. our, a lot of adults in our community who uh, find out so. all of a sudden <laughs> that they have hydrocephalus and, and they kind of don't know what to do with that diagnosis. So good luck, Natasha. I'm glad you don't need a shunt. And uh, thank you, Dr. Walker, for joining us today. My pleasure.